we have all the machining capabilities. We can five-axis mill, we can turn, we can pinch turn, we can do all sorts of uh, operations to generate those shapes. One of the potential ad benefits is reducing how much uh, time you spend in cut or how many chips you create on a part. Hey guys, I'm here today with Tilo and we're at the DMG Mori Chicago Technology Show. Now we're standing in front of the Laser Tech 3000 and Tilo, you've been working on this machine for quite a while, right? Yeah, well, not this machine for a while. Um, this machine only just arrived in the US this year. It's okay. a fairly new product for us. Um, it's been installed since March and we're still getting our, uh, we're still getting used to it, but there's a lot to learn and it's a pretty solid machine to begin with. And this is a pretty unique style of the additive machining where it's direct energy deposition, right? Yeah, so direct energy deposition, the way we use that term means that we've got a laser coming out of our nozzle directing the energy at our part. And the deposition part is that the nozzle also shoots powder out at the surface of the part while we do the weld. The combination of that laser and that powder creates a melt pool and creates a weld that builds up uh, layer by layer creating our parts. All right, and is this machine just additive? No, it is a hybrid. It can do both the additive and the machining. In this particular model, we have a three-axis turret on the bottom with option for driven tools. We have a two-axis sub-spindle, one-axis main spindle, and a four-axis upper spindle tool spindle, which currently holds the laser head, but we can actually remove that and or tool change it to go back to our left and pick up any number of mills, drills, turning tools, what have you. Okay, and, and that, that changeover from additive to subtractive, that is like a tool change. There's no intervention? Yep, you just call T equals laser, M6, go. That's, <laughs> That's it. That's simple. That's cool. So uh, then you get the additive, you get the subtractive. What type of components do you see being made on something like this? We have a lot of applications. Um, one of our primary targets is repair. Um, you take components which have like shafts that have wear surfaces that have worn down over time rebuilding those surfaces or cladding a hard facing on top of them so they will last longer in the first place. That's what we're really targeting as our first target. Um, beyond that, we can do basically any traditionally machined component we can do as well. Since we have all the machining capabilities, we can five axis mill, we can turn, we can pinch turn, we can do all sorts of uh, operations to generate those shapes. One of the potential ad benefits is reducing how much uh, time you spend in cut or how many chips you create on a part. For example, if you have a long tube with a flange at the end and a boss in the middle, instead of buying a really big blank and machining all that away, you can buy just the tube that you need, print the flange on the end, print the boss in the middle, then switch over to your milling tools and turn, mill, drill, tap, all of that in one operation, you've got your finished part. Hey, that's incredible. I'm sure people can, a lot of opportunity for cost savings. For sure. Um, so what's, when you're talking about replacing billets and starting with something else, what's like the material property difference? Is, do you lose anything doing the additive? No, you don't. Um, we typically quote our parameters, or our, the properties of our welds to come out somewhere between cast and wrought, though it depends on the application a lot. If you have a single layer coating on a big block of material, that coating is gonna be able to cool very quickly, so you can get very high hardness. Um, but if you have a really big buildup, that part is gonna be hot for a very long time and will actually soften. So you may change your material properties just depending on the geometry that you print. But we can use that to our advantage. Like I said, with the single layer coating, having a large subsurface material and then putting a thin coating on top means that you can quench that weld and actually achieve higher hardness than you would normally. Um, one of our favorite applications is using Ferro 55 as a hard facing material because in that kind of quenching situation, we can achieve upper 60s Rockwell hardness with Ferro 55 and we can meet or exceed what is typically H13 in applications. So you guys are able to support anyone who buys this machine if they're trying to push for new metals. Definitely. And a lot of our machine sales start with a feasibility study, checking if we can make the parts, and then if it's something that's pushing the boundary of what we have, we build in a material development process to develop a alloy and a process for that application. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. So, so we have beautiful machines. Uh, you know, you're obviously very knowledgeable about them, and thanks for talking to me today. Yeah, of course. It's fun. I, Enjoy working on them, I enjoy talking about them. Yeah, all right, awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Dior. Thanks.